Welcome to the channel, Laughing Here, and today I'm going to go over the news I missed this past week. I have four pretty awesome news stories to cover, uh, but before I get started, please hit that like button and subscribe. It definitely helps my channel grow. We're starting out small. Hopefully, we'll get bigger here into the future, and every little bit helps a lot. So thank you so much. So this week, we actually got some Battlefield 6 news that was published on EA's website. It was actually a note that was sent to all of the EA employees saying, Battlefield 6 is actually ahead of schedule, uh, which is surprising and really good to hear. All right, so in the note made by Chief Studios Officer Laura Maley, she said, hey everyone, our upcoming Battlefield game is coming together to be an exceptional game. Not, not just for this year, but also for the future of this powerful brand. The project is trekking towards the franchise's earliest alpha. The gameplay is at an unprecedented scale, and we are taking full advantage of the technology in the next-gen consoles. The team has done an incredible job despite the challenges of working from home. We want to build on our position of strength, focus on the opportunity in front of us, and set our game makers up for success to deliver the best possible experience to our players this fall. So we are making a bold move. Criterion is joining DICE and DICE LA to focus on Battlefield. Criterion and DICE have a strong history of working together, and we are confident that this partnership will make a great game even better. So, I mean, in general, this is pretty good news that we might actually get a Battlefield beta uh, early this year, uh, which is actually pretty surprising. I know with kind of COVID and the pandemic and everything like that, it's not something we usually hear from developers and publishers. It's usually that we're getting a, some sort of delay. Um, so this is uh, very surprising, but in general, just really awesome to hear. Uh, they do go on to say, we have an exceptional year ahead with our next Battlefield, so we want to thank everyone for coming together with the energy and determination to do something special. We've recently seen the first version of the reveal tra trailer for Battlefield, and it's shaping up to be a truly amazing first look at this groundbreaking game. I think fans are going to love it. So, as I said before, I am really happy to hear the development for this game is going so smoothly. Uh, the next Battlefield is in my top 10 most anticipated games list of this year. So, you know, quick self plug if you haven't seen it, uh, there should be a link down to it below. Uh, but yeah, just in general, super excited to hear, especially that it's going as well as they're making it sound. I hope that ends up actually being true. Um, we haven't really been hearing a whole lot of good news from developers and publishers with how game development's been going. A lot of it's just been, yeah, we're delayed or, you know, this XYZ happened, what have you. Uh, so yeah, this is just really good to hear. And I did hear that Criterion was going to help them out with the next Battlefield, which was confirmed here as well. Uh, Criterion is best known for working on the Needs Need for Speed franchise. Um, and yeah, they've been helping out DICE and DICE LA with this Battlefield, which is really awesome. So uh, it sounds like we're going to get some sort of reveal trailer in the coming months, maybe even the relatively near future. We'll kind of see. And it sounds like we'll also get some sort of beta uh, earlier in the summer, hopefully. So yeah, in general, I'm just super excited uh, for this. So I'm a huge fan of the Battlefield. I've been hearing kind of rumors and there's been lots of speculation as well that this is going to be more of a return to form for the Battlefield franchise, which in my opinion is definitely much needed. Uh, so yeah, I am just super pumped for this and uh, hopefully it turns out. All right, so the next bit of news I have for you is we're getting more Switch rumors, uh, this time from Bloomberg.com, basically stating that Nintendo put in a big fat order for a bunch of OLED screens, uh, 7 inches specifically, uh, that uh, may or may not be coming out this year. So I do want to preface the story with I've been hearing Switch Pro rumors since like a month after the original Switch came out. Um, so... We'll kind of see. I've been waiting for a Switch Pro for a long time. I, I have a normal Switch, but uh, you know, it would be nice to have a little bit more of a, of a beefy console. Uh, but Bloomberg does say Samsung Display Company will start mass production of 7-inch 720p resolution OLED panels as early as June, 
with an initial monthly target of just under a million units, said the people who asked not to be identified discussing internal matters. Sounds like someone from Samsung. The displays are slated for shipment to assemblers around July. Representatives of Nintendo and Samsung declined to comment. So I'm not going to be surprised if this does end up being true. Like I said before, we've been hearing the rumors for a really long time. Um, but Nintendo's pretty well known for having some sort of update, specifically with their handheld lines. I mean, looking at the DS, we had the DS, the DS Lite, the DSi, and the DSi XL. Um, so, like I said, not super surprised by this, um, but we'll kind of see. And the article does say that the OLED panel will also consume less battery, offer higher contrast and possible fast response time when compared to the Switch's current liquid crystal display. Nintendo has denied the existence of a Pro model coming out multiple times, even as recently as February, made by the Nintendo president. Uh, however, that being said, I believe they said something similar to no new models coming out last year. And of course, we also got the Switch Lite model as well. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I think it's probably going to happen. I don't know if it's necessarily going to happen this year, uh, but it does make sense just kind of based on Nintendo's history. There are also some rumors going around saying that the next Switch model is going to have beefier specs in general as well and could reach up to 4K resolution, which I'll be honest, I don't really see happening. Uh, I just, I can't see a Switch model with a 720 display still like being able to output 4K. Uh, onto a TV. If, if it is 4K, it's going to be one of the up to 4K type of deals when we really only probably get like, what, 2K or 1080, 60 frames, which I'll be honest, I'm not going to complain about. I just personally don't see it happening. So this is definitely a wait and see story. We'll kind of see what happens. It would make sense if it does come out uh, later in the year, October, November, kind of right before the holiday season. Um, but like I said, we'll chat to kind of wait and see for this one. And next up, we got news from VGC saying that E3 2021 is canceled based on LA City documents that came out this week. So looking at the document here, it says E3 2021 arrival date June 15th. And it says canceled live event in 2021. Working with production team on broadcast options at LA Live slash LACC, working on 2022 and 2023 license. So this would not be the first time the E3 would be canceled. Of course, it was canceled last year as well due to the pandemic. So would not surprise me if this happened uh, once again. And those who are unfamiliar with E3, that is basically the yearly trade show for everyone in the games industry, at the very least in America, kind of showing what games they have and hardware coming out for this year and into the next year as well. However, the last few years, E3 has been having a lot of trouble uh, starting back when Nintendo originally actually left and started doing their own digital broadcast and then was also shortly followed by Sony as well. Uh, so now basically it's Microsoft and Bethesda as well as Ubisoft. Those are kind of like the three big ones and EA has also stopped doing it as well. They've been doing their own kind of live broadcast in the same vicinity, uh, but not actually at E3. So this does not spell really good news for E3. As I said, they've been kind of in a decline for a while now. Last year, they were going to have it be more of an experience-based thing, which didn't sound very good. It sounded like old people trying to be hip and kind of revitalize their trade show, which basically what it was. Uh, it really was no surprise that it was canceled last year, and honestly, it kind of sounds like it was going to be a good thing that it got canceled. So uh, I will say I loved E3 growing up. I remember my freshman year of high school. Uh, it actually was usually during exams. And between my exams, I'd go to a friend's house to watch E3 press conferences to see what new games and consoles were coming out the next year or even sometimes that year. So there is a special place in my heart for E3. I don't want to see it go away. I would like to see it have some sort of rebound, uh, but the directions that they've been going in the last few years does not 
really say that story that they're going to rebound very well. So even if E3 is canceled, I do really hope that the industry does still have all of their big presentations in early June. So we can kind of keep that tradition of E3 alive. The spirit of E3, if you will, can hopefully continue on. You know, we keep on getting those big game announcements, those big console unveilings, um, but we will kind of find out what happens to E3 in the coming years. I hope they can make a rebound, but uh, as it is now, time will tell. All right, and our final story, and definitely my favorite, Sony is going bananas uh, by trying to make these bananas into controllers. <laughs> so Sony recently did a patent uh, that would turn everyday objects into a controller, which is pretty cool. Pa uh, bananas being one of them, oranges and pens as well, where basically a camera would be looking at the object and based on the input, and kind of orientation of it that would kind of dictate what you're doing on screen. So kind of a cool pattern in general, um, but uh, definitely one of the stranger ones out there. So from gamesindustry.biz, Sony apparently wants to do something about controllers having too much technology in them. It would be desirable if a user could use an inexpensive, simple, and non-electronic device as a video game peripheral, the, art, the application reads. The present disclosure seeks to address or at least alleviate some of the above identified problem. And basically how it works is a camera gets images of the items in the user hands, tracks the items based on pixels, contours, and slash colors in the images rather than QR codes or such other kind of tracking technology. A game could either be trained to recognize objects as controllers or be pre-configured such that the user is told ahead of time of what could be used as controller. The application doesn't specifically mention this, but it would be a really nice cost-effective way to deal with uh, you know, functionality in games. Uh, there's also a pretty awesome section uh, that has two object controllers, thus the two bananas, that will let you basically dual wield these bad boys. Um, I just, I don't know, I just think that this is probably the most crazy patent uh, we've I've ever seen. But at the same time, I love it. So Sony, if you can make this a reality, uh, maybe not on the PlayStation 5, but at the very least PlayStation 6, uh, banana controllers confirmed, please. <laughs> but it is important to keep in mind that a lot of patents are just kind of put on there, put on paper in case the company ever wants to use it or make sure another company doesn't basically take the ideas that they've thought of and makes a bunch of money on it. So more times than not, patents don't really go anywhere, but it can be a kind of a good indication of what kind of technology we'll see in the future. And I gotta say, this is pretty cool. So that is the last uh, news I wanted to go over with today. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Uh, <laughs> Banana controllers. I'm sorry. That's right, past self. We all love banana controllers in the future. Because banana controllers are the future. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So, <laughs> the audio and the video at the end just didn't sync. It was just a digital glitch. So, uh, future Skylar from what the one you've been mostly watching here. Um, I do want to say I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, and uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you did enjoy it, feel free to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. It definitely helps us out, or me out, I guess. But uh, yeah, once again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day, night, whatever time it is. And uh, take care.